Hello there. My name is Jordan Scott. Uh, thank you for coming to our webinar. Uh, today we will be discussing distributed network monitoring. We will also be having a customer interview with Eric Goodwin from United uh, Veterans United Home Loans. Our agenda today, we will be discussing uh, the, the different types of network monitoring. We'll take a look at generic monitoring practices, what they do and how effective they can be, followed by interview with Eric Goodwin, and then a little bit of Q&A. So what type of monitoring tools are out there right now? Right now we have SNMP, NetFlow, and Distributed Network Monitoring. SNMP, most of you know about this already because since it's almost 30 years old now, it's been standardized in the 1980s. It was the most basic type of monitoring at the time. Uh, when it started, it was basically just monitored hardware devices, giving you the textbook up down notifications. But now it can give you some status information, types of bytes in and out, uh, device status, even so much as the temperature. But if there's any issues with the device, uh, you won't receive any alerts until after users have already experienced some sort of issue. Next, we have NetFlow. This is a newer technology. This was standardized in the 2000s. I, it will give you more information compared to SNMP. It monitors flows, meaning traffic between two destinations. It's very useful to find out how much bandwidth applications are taking up. Uh, if a certain location is having issues, you'd be able to locate where the issue is. For instance, if a huge client is doing huge downloads and clogging bandwidth, you'd be able to narrow down where, where those issues lie. Like SNMP though, this is passive monitoring. So after the monitor flows from a user to an application or if they're experiencing some sort of issue, you won't receive an alert or find that information until after the fact. Um, another negative for NetFlow can be that it can provide an overabundance of information, which can be overwhelming when trying to find a simple troubleshooting issue. Since it, and since it can provide overabundance of information, it can become very resource intensive. So at this point, do you have everything in place? We have the SNMP to monitor the devices. We have NetFlow to monitor the applications. But what do we have to gauge the user experience? And that is where distributed network monitoring comes in. This will help uh, capture information from the network. And you can accomplish this by running tests at your remote sites to commonly used outbound uh, destinations. We do this by uh, doing using synthetic monitoring, or essentially we will simulate user activities to commonly used destinations, such as websites, applications, cloud applications, servers, et cetera. And you'll be able to proactively test those uh, targets and see if there's any issues before your users will experience any of those issues. The good part about the uh, distributed network monitoring is this isn't meant to replace any of SNMP and NetFlow. Those things have been working wonders for years. This is to add that third and final layer to help um, third and final layer to help give you the ultimate protection on your network. So a use case of the distributed network monitoring would be uh, when issues are com will complain uh, in regards to if they're having any network issues with remote sites that are having access in cloud applications, when you're at the knock and it's difficult to see what is going on, you rely on user information. And typically when users will give you information about the issues, it will be as much as, you know, uh, it's not working, it's slow things like that. It's essentially going to the doctor and saying, my body hurts, fix me. Well, as you may know, that doesn't really help too much. So you need to, you don't know if it's an isolated incident, if it's multiple locations, uh, multiple applications, etc. So way to counteract that is you'd be able to deploy a sensor at your remote locations to collect information in real time 
and see issues, um, we'll see when the issue started and who's affected. So how does NetBees do this? Well, it's three simple steps. First, you deploy the sensors, you configure the tests, and then you get alerts in real time. We have many different types of uh, sensors. We have your ethernet, your Wi-Fi, and virtual. All of these sensors uh, provide valuable, will provide valuable information for different use cases. For example, the wireless, uh, wireless agents can help pick up, will run the tests that the wired agents do, but also pick up, you know, simple wireless statistics. Next, you can figure the monitoring tests. Uh, you'll be able to configure tests such as ping, DNS, HTTP, and trace route to those specific targets, such as, uh, you know, servers, applications, et cetera. And then you have your iPerf, speed tests, and VoIP, which will be able to gauge the traffic, the bandwidth across your network. And lastly, you, you get alerts and real-time data all in the dashboard. Um, you're able to see what's going on at that point in time, as well as see what was going on, you know, three weeks ago at seven o'clock at night. Um, you know, you'd be able to see what exactly was going on when an end user logged a complaint. So next, we have the pleasure of having Eric Goodwin with us. Uh, he is a current NetBees customer, um, and we're just going to have a little, cus a little interview with him to see how his uh, experience with NetBees has been going so far. So Eric, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, to start out with, you know, simply what does your co uh, company do, Veterans United Home Loans? Well, currently we're the nation's largest dedicated provider of VA, lo VA loans uh, based in Columbia, Missouri, and uh, we're just dedicated uh, to making the American dream of, a, of home ownership for our veterans a reality. Um, we're currently at 2,500 uh, employees uh, and have 38 offices across the U.S. and we're based in Columbia, Missouri. Oh, that, that's awesome. Um, that's a great thing to be doing for the veterans. Um, you know, they've already done so much and we appreciate it. So what is your role over there? Well, for the past six and a half years, my role has been a network architect here at Veterans United. And uh, in that role, I've been able to develop and maintain a high level design plan for our overall logical and technical network architecture, which also includes providing technical leadership and consulting across the organization, you know, from strategic decision making down to project planning level. So um, kind of a liaison between the business and the IT side. Okay, so is it just you on your team, or is do you, is there uh, multiple of you? Um, on my team, there's a there's a dozen architects, um, and all of us have our uh, focus. Mine is obviously network architecture. Um, we have server virtualization, security, uh, amongst many others in the architecture group. And then under that, uh, within our same department, we have an operations department uh, that takes care of the day to day uh, feeding of the network and mm -hmm. the structure um, and, uh, and, and expansion of that. So when, um, so then when an end user has to complain, I'm sure it kind of, you know, flows through everybody, everybody will hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, even, even possibly the bosses saying, you know, someone who's taking care of this, et cetera. It's hard to kind of, or if you have the right tool in place, it's easier to be able to communicate with yeah. each other, right? Yeah, fortunately, I'm part of an IT organization that has, uh, uh, has best practices from an ITIL perspective to uh, address issues and escalate them as necessary. Um, so having processes in place to help us uh, make us successful is, 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 is important, but also having the right tool set um, from an operations level uh, really helps us identify our problems. And, and, and our goal is to identify problems before the end user knows it. But yeah, so um, that was kind of kind of leading to my next question. You know, what problems were you facing that help, that brought you to NetBees? Well, uh, you know, we use several applications that are tied to the loan uh, loan process, and uh, they're very uh, latency sensitive. Um, and then there's also we also uh, use voice over IP, and uh, we're also diving in over the next two years into virtual desktop and 
you know, supporting these real-time applications just demand a visibility tool that gives you near real-time statistics to identify the current health of your network. Um, as you, as you, you know, reviewed in your slideshow, you know, NetFlow and SNP are still very important parts of the monitoring mm -hmm. troubleshooting process, but uh, sometimes their sample rates aren't close enough to really find out where, when and where the problems are at. So we really want a tool uh, to provide this data in a manner so not only IT operations folks um, could identify problems and know where there's problems, but we've also have some uh, business analysts within the IT organization that are able to look at things and our software development team um, to look at, to, to use the NetBeast dashboard to kind of get a weather report of where's the network at? Is everything green? Is there anything concerned? Uh, and, and then they can drill down into it and look at it. So having that, uh, that dashboard to be able to consume that data and uh, determine where the problem are, if there is a problem uh, with the network, where it's at. It's also you are able to distribute kind of, I know there's different types of uh, user licenses such as admin, read, write, read only, mm -hmm. you're able to distribute those to you know, anybody that wants to stick their nose yeah. into what's going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a good way to at least help, help get people, you know, help them help show them what's going on as well as so then they don't have to come to you every time saying what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, things can get overwhelming when there are problems and having an easy dashboard that's mm -hmm. uh, you know, red, green, yellow to look at, uh, it kind of, it, it can be a, a little bit uh, less daunting of a task to kind of just see if the network is causing the issue. Yeah. So, um, so then how would you say the experience, you know, adding NetBees on top of um, the SNMP and NetFlow, you know, how has that maybe changed the, when there is an issue that arises, how you'll address it, you know, what you look at, you know, um, your step-by-step. -step. Well, I'm sure every network admin has a different style of troubleshooting and what layers they look at first, you know, obviously I like, I like to look, you know, start at the, at the bottom of the OSI model and look up, uh, you know, um, but, uh, uh, you know, NetBeast is a, is a great place to look at first. And we're also, we have email alerts uh, coming from NetBeast that uh, will come into our inbox and we're able to see when things were, uh, went into a yellow state or a red state or even came back out of it. So we can even look at our email logs from that perspective. But uh, to be able to jump in and look at that tool and then look at our other tools that are using SNMP and NetFlow uh, technologies uh, to, to address the issue. Yeah, um, I know it can help, like we had mentioned before, you know, NetBees is just a great complementary uh, product to all those other monitoring um, tools. Um, so I was using a couple of the different notification settings that, that we have, you know, uh, with uh, email alerts, syslog, things like that. Uh, yeah, mostly email and uh, we're working to automate a little bit to uh, maybe send those emails into ServiceNow uh, to hopefully open a case. Um, but, you know, we're in the process of, 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 of continuing to build on top of what we have um, um, from a monitoring standpoint, what we do with those alerts, and uh, who needs to be alerted at those times. Oh, okay. awesome. Um, are there any other features about NetBees that you want to let the world know that you know that we have that maybe might be a little hidden feature that other users may not be aware of. Um, so you know we have branch offices across the country, and uh, being able to have a you know basically a Raspberry Pi sitting there as a, as your little network admin in each each uh, IT rack that we have in one of these branches, it's a it's a great tool to go to you know test download and upload and download speeds uh, when their local uh, internet connection may be giving, giving, them, giving them problems. Also holding the, uh, the ISPs accountable to the commit rates that they've, they've, they said they're gonna give us. So running hourly uh, upload and download uh, speed test from the uh, scheduled speed test from each NetBees at each branch uh, gives us uh, more trending data to be able to see, hey, we've been getting, you know, for an example, 25 meg down and three meg up for the last three months, and now it's reduced, um, you know, to maybe five meg by one meg over the last three days. Then we could provide that data to the ISP, send them a screenshot and say, look, this is what we're seeing, and, you know, have evidence that there is a problem. And uh, 
it's been nice to be able to actually get these these issues escalated with the ISP and resolved quicker. And not only from a throughput standpoint, but also um, from packet loss or latency, we can we have that data available through NetBees to be able to provide that to the providers and uh, and uh, get those issues escalated and resolved quickly. Um, some other things uh, that you that that you all uh, uh, have helped um, develop is. Uh, determining a mean opinion score or a MOS score, um, which is really important to uh, voice over IP, uh, to be able to run those as scheduled test or ad hoc test, uh, just uh, gives us a, kind of a grade at where these specific network connections uh, are at and if that could be causing any of the problems if we're having voice quality or uh, uh, in, in those in those situations. Yeah, we. Uh... I'm sure you're aware we every about every quarter we like to put it, push out a new release with some new features, mm -hmm. um, such as the one that we recently did with the incidents, where instead of so you don't receive an alert if it may be a one-off, you know, failure, uh, you'll res after five or more alerts in a certain amount of time, you know, you'll receive an incident to know, hey, this is an actual problem. Right. So, so your email's not, you know. Uh, getting uh, filled every every yeah. second, which is, you yeah. know, test. Uh, but um, so Eric, uh, we uh, we appreciate having you on and you you coming out helping spread the word about NetBees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we 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 appreciate you know anybody that has is able to come out, um, let everybody else know some of the hidden tips and tricks of it as well. Uh, next, we are going to go into a Q and A. Also have uh, Panos here, one of our co-founders, uh, to be able to help out with the Q and A. Thank you, uh, Eric and Jordan. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's see a couple of questions that that uh, came in. Um, so. Uh, Jordan very briefly mentioned the Wi-Fi agents. So somebody asks, uh, what do the Wi-Fi agents uh, monitor? Um, so, uh, um, so yeah, so the Wi-Fi agents, like I had mentioned before, will run all the same tests as the wired agents, but over the uh, wireless, um, as well as it's able to pick up some general wireless statistics, such as signal strength, um, channel bit rate uh, and as well as make sure that if it, everything is connected correctly. Thank you, Jordan. Um, the following question is um, about um, also another type of agent that you briefly talked about, the virtual agent. Mm -hmm. um, where do you install the virtual agent? What's its purpose? Yeah, so uh, we there's different use cases for the virtual agents. Um, where you might deploy them will depend on your own specific use case, but it would either be deployed, could be possibly deployed on uh, a laptop or a computer, on your own physical hardware. But typically what I've seen has been, it's been deployed in the data center so that uh, users are able to uh, run tests from their remote sites to their own data centers. Now, um, if you can refresh me, Eric, I believe you have, are using virtual agents as well, correct? Yeah, we use virtual agents in our data center and our current virtual infrastructure. Um, that's where we use them um, at the uh, offices um, where there's not, you know, we do not have VMware out at the, at the offices. Everything's in the data center. So we use the wired agents at the offices and then run tests back to the virtual agents in the data center. But, okay. yeah. And that has that helped you, you know, I guess, get a better insight so that if your users are trying to connect there and they're mm -hmm. saying, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what those are really there for is just kind of head ends. I mean, we do have targets on them. Um, our target set on our data center VMs may be a little bit different than our branch or corporate offices, but um, you know, that's, that's the, the beauty of all the targets and you can treat each net bees a little different depending on its application. Awesome. And actually, that's a good segue. Thank you, Eric, for the next question. That so, so people are curious about um, your network, right? You have all these thirty locations. Somebody asks, um, "What is the kind of um, uh, 
uh, type of this location? Are they data centers? Um, are they like small regional offices? Are they maybe call centers? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, what I consider a branch office would be more of a, a brick and mortar um, in, uh, in more near our military basis because that's, ba that's where our customer base is. And that would be an office of, um, you know, three to 10, maybe 15 um, employees. And uh, at those offices, we have one dedicated WAN Ethernet circuit and then um, an internet circuit um, uh, for, to, for draining their local internet. And then the WAN is just dedicated for um, internal application. But they also play as backup to each other. So using the NetBees agent and the targets, we're able to watch the quality um, uh, of those circuit of both of those circuits by setting up specific targets to run across the WAN circuit or run across the internet circuit. And then if one of them goes down, then we know um, we haven't lost visibility to that branch because we have redundancy. Um, then we have a target that will go into alarm on that specific agent and then send us an email along with some other alerting uh, systems we have with our SNMP and NetFlow platforms. Got it. Is there any, any VPN in the mix there or just? Uh... Um, I, we use DMVPN as backup um, a, with Cisco. Um, so mm -hmm. that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's more of a site to site, site to multi-site VPN as a backup. So, and it's always up, um, but that, that would be the only VPN technology we use um, from a branch location. Got it, got it, thank you. And one last question. Um, so how many agents can the dashboard accommodate? So how, can, how, how, how big can this, this be? Yeah, so um, you know, just like the other network tools, it depends how many agents, how many tests, et cetera, that you're running. But currently right now we have multiple customers that have hundreds of agents deployed, uh, even globally, that they're able to support uh, on their dashboard. Uh, it would all just depend on the type of resources you're able to dedicate to it, um, to how much the dashboard, how much information dashboard is able to hold. Um, for instance, if you know you're running a void test every five minutes, as well as iperf and running ping tests, you know that's going to be a little more research. Uh, resource intensive opposed to just doing uh, a iperf test once a day. Um, so it, it will all depend, but typically we have not had any issues so far uh, being able to support hundreds of agents per customer. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Actually, we don't have any more questions. Um... Okay. So thank you everybody for attending today. Thank you, Eric. We, we really appreciate having you on. Might have to have you on in the future again. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and thank you again to all who attended. Uh, this will make sure to check out uh, www.netbeast.net to uh, be able to access this recording as well as any other information about us uh, to help you be able to proactively monitor your network and prove to everybody that it's not the network. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day.